Hey, if you'd like to skip this long intro and go straight to the shortcuts. Today's video is brought to you by Logic Keyboard, a company that makes custom shortcut keyboards for a wide variety of different software applications. Today I'm going to be giving away one of these keyboards, so if you'd like to enter for a chance to win, be sure to leave a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what your favorite keyboard shortcut is for Adobe After Effects, or tell me a joke, or just leave some kind of comment. So they recently sent me three keyboards. They have a couple of new ones. This is a new mini Bluetooth one. This is for Adobe Premiere Pro. And they gave me one that I'm using right now. This is called the Adobe Filmmaker keyboard. It has shortcut keys for Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro. And when they first told me about this, I thought it was gonna be super cluttered. However, they have this amazing color scheme set up that works with the modifier keys. And it's really, really nice. And it's backlit. And I've got my blue microphone plugged in right on the back there. And I happened to be learning Blender at the moment, so when they were sending these keyboards over, I inquired about a Blender keyboard, and sure enough, they have one for Blender. Awesome. Again, if you'd like to enter for a chance to win a keyboard, leave a comment in the comment section. So these keyboard shortcuts are not organized by like my most favorite. It's a simple alphabetical order. All right, so I've got a little vector file of the sun here. Now the first shortcut is center anchor point in layer. So here you can see my anchor points off to the side here. You've got a tool called the pan behind tool that allows you to grab that anchor point and move it all around. But sometimes you just wanna center it up back in the layer quickly. Well, to do that, you hold control alt and then hit the home key, and that's gonna put that right in the middle. Now you can center this in view, and center in view allows you to center up a layer in the middle of the comp via the anchor point. So let me undo this, and so my anchor point's back over here. Now if I hold control and hit home, it's gonna center the anchor point of this layer in my composition. Now this is different from aligning the layer. Aligning the layer aligns it via the bounding box. So I've got my align panel open here. Now watch what happens when I align this layer to the composition. If I align it uh, horizontally and vertically, you can see it puts it right in the middle via the bounding box. And once again, I can center that anchor point in the middle of the layer by control alt home now everything's centered up control or command d to duplicate or you can select a group duplicate the group so you can get a lot of layers really quickly this also works in the project panel for sequences or any other asset up here now you can obviously navigate the composition panel using your scroll wheel to quickly zoom in out and then you can hold spacebar to activate the hand tool and move this around, you know, it's an easy way to navigate. But what this is doing is it's changing your magnification ratio here, which you can see you're manually changing this. Now sometimes I'll be way zoomed in, it's just too much, and I have to do a couple clicks and mouse drags to get it back to where I want it. Now a quick way to snap this back and fit it perfectly up to 100%, basically fit it to this panel, is to hold Alt and then hit forward slash. And not only will that automatically fit it, but it's keeping it fit up to 100%, which means if you move the panel now, if you're like, you know, changing the size of the panel, it's gonna change that dynamically. Until, that is, I zoom in again, which is gonna throw it back out of that. So now if I move the panels, it's gonna stay at that zoom level. Maybe that's what you want. I use this all the time, Alt, forward slash. Now I'm not working on a huge screen. I work on a laptop all the time, so I need all the real estate I can get. And when I'm recording tutorials, I, li I like to, everything to look nice and clean. That's why I use control backslash, which is basically full screen or maximizes the app window, maximizes the After Effects window. So right now it's activated. If I hit it again, it's gonna deactivate it. And now you can see, you can see this top bar menu. It's not maximized, so I'm just gonna hit control again. And now you can see it's nice and clean, taking up the whole screen. I've got a trimmed clip down here. A quick way to navigate to the in and out points of this particular layer is to simply select the layer and then use the I and O keys. So I is gonna take you to the first frame of your layer. O is gonna take you to the last frame of your layer. Probably my most used keyboard shortcut, I don't know if this is the same for a lot of you, is tilde. And this is maximize panel. So it essentially maximizes whatever panel your cursor is currently hovering over extremely useful. I use it all the time. I probably use it like thousands of times every day. If you'd like to move frame by frame on the timeline, hold the control key and then use the right and left arrows to move. If you look down here on my timeline panel, you can see that my top layer has effects applied. So if I want to look at the effect controls panel, I can just quickly hit the F3 key with a selected and it's going to show me. Earlier I talked about this pan behind tool that allows you to manipulate your anchor point. Well, there's a shortcut key for that and then just press Y and that's gonna activate that. And then you can quickly move that anchor point around. If you'd like to pre-compose layers, just grab your layers and then hit Control Shift C and now you've got a pre-comp. 
All right, we have a bunch of layers here. Let me select one. Now let's say I want to quickly, you know, jump between the different ones and select different ones. I'm going to hold the control key and then you can simply go up or down using the arrows. Now, if you'd like to move a layer and send it forward or backward, you can select it and then hold control and hit the bracket keys. So left bracket is going to push it down or send it back. Right bracket is going to push it up. So you can see here, left bracket, control, left bracket, now control, right bracket. You can also use bracket keys to move a layer around on the timeline. So let's say I want this layer to actually start over here. So with the layer selected, I can hit left bracket and that's gonna move the endpoint of this layer right to my playhead. Let's say if I want it to end here, I can just simply hit right bracket and it's gonna put it there. And you can see here, let's say I actually want it to end, let's say I want it to end at 13 seconds. I'll just bring the playhead over here, right bracket, it's gonna move the, end, the out point directly there. Let's say I need to be real specific with time. Well, I can use markers for that. So let's say I'm gonna to go to a 10 second mark. To set markers, I can just hit Shift 8. And if there's a layer selected, it's gonna add a layer marker. If I've got no layers selected, it's gonna add a marker to the timeline here. And then I can double click on the marker and make whatever changes I want, leave a comment. You can tap E twice to reveal any expressions. You can do it with no layers selected and it'll show you all the expressions on all layers, or you can do it to a specific layer. The U key works the same way, but it's going to show you all keyframes. So with no layers selected and I hit U with the timeline selected, it'll show me all the keyframes for all layers. If I select just a specific layer and hit U, it'll show me just all the keyframes for that specific layer. This is another keyboard shortcut I use on a daily basis, probably hundreds of times. If you look up here, you'll notice there's a little checkbox for snapping, and then there's these different parameters. You can snap along the edges, extending beyond layer boundaries, snap to and show features inside collapse compositions. So there's all these snapping options, but if you just simply hold the control key when you have a layer selected, so let me grab my son here, and, and it's important to realize where I'm grabbing it at, the specific part of the layer. So I'm grabbing it near the center. Now if I hold control, you can suddenly see like these bounding boxes for each specific layer and it snaps. Look, it's snapping right to the top line. If I drag it to the corner, it's gonna snap to that. You can see a little square. If I drag it to the center, it's gonna snap to the center. If I were to just drag it around without holding control, you know, there's no snapping at all. So I can quickly activate snapping. And what's really cool about this, it's gonna snap based on like the location I grabbed it. So if I grab over here, the top left part of my layer, and I hold control, you'll notice that that center anchor point is not snapping. And that's because I have this top left area of the bounding box selected. Check it out, you can even see that little mini square over there. Now as I drag, it's going to snap that to all the particular parts of my bounding box. This is extremely, extremely useful. I use it all the time. This even works on motion paths. So when you're connecting things to motion paths, this will snap to the motion path and you can move it along the motion path. Crazy. And it works with the pan behind tool. So I'm gonna to switch to the pan behind tool and grab the anchor point. And now check this out. I hold control, it's gonna snap that anchor point. So you can bring the anchor point to the bottom center. You can bring it to the right side. It's gonna snap straight to the vertical and horizontal axes. Again, incredibly, incredibly useful. So I work with motion paths a lot of the times. And one thing that comes with, you know, comes with the territory of working with shape layers is you have all these crazy parameters down here. So you open the contents folder, then you open shape one, then you open stroke, then you open uh, dashes, and then if you add dashes, you have these. And now this is taking up a whole lot of screen real estate, which I happen to treasure. I hate having all these parameters that I'm not using open. So let's say I wanna you know, be working a lot with um, just this stroke. So I can select the stroke here, and if I hit S twice, that's gonna isolate just the stroke attributes. So I can go down here now and just look at the stroke attributes. I can do that even further. Let's say I just want the dashes. I can select dashes, hit S twice, and that's just gonna isolate these dashes. Very, very cool. And you can do that across multiple layers as well. To split a layer, simply select the layer and do Control Shift D. That works with multiple layers as well. Down here at the bottom of the comp panel, you'll notice this little camera icon. This is take snapshots. And then over here, you have show snapshot. And there are keyboard shortcuts for this to help you out. So if you hold shift and you hit F5 through F8, those will allow you to take snapshots. You can take four snapshots at a time. And after you take those snapshots, you can simply press the key again to reveal the snapshot. And this can be really useful in a bunch of different cases. Like if you're doing like frame by frame animation or doing some really precise animation or trying to match two comps, this can be really helpful. So let me just show you. This is the animation of this like ping pong thing. So I could come over here, hold shift, hit F5. 
and you can see that it just took a screenshot here. Now, if I go all the way over here, and then I hit the F5 key again or hold it, you can see that it's showing me where it was. So let me just do a couple here. I can do Shift F6, Shift F7, and Shift F8. Now if I come over here, let's let's run between these here. Here's F5, F6, F7, F8. So there's a bunch of columns with a bunch of tools and information down here in the timeline panel. And there's a little button down here that says toggle switches modes. So right now it's in modes. You can see a blending mode and then your track map mode over here. And if you go down and toggle this, it's going to toggle to your switches. So I'm often jumping between these and you can use keyboard shortcut F4 to quickly cycle those so you don't have to hit that button. So you can see my keyframes down here and you can see that I've actually trimmed my work area bar to match up with these keyframes. Well, let's say I just want to trim the comp to fit the work area. Well, I can do that by hitting Control Shift X and that's automatically going to trim it down. I can also trim the in and out points of my work area to snap right to my playhead. So to put the in point, let's say I want the in point of my work area to be over here, I'll hit the B key and then I'm going to drag it out here and then hit the N key and now I have this perfect work area. You can get really precise with that. This next tip combines two of these keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to select this layer here and if you remember the I and O keys will take my playhead directly to the in and out points of this layer. So there's a keyboard shortcut called IBON, it's I-B-O-N. And what this does is this is automatically going to trim your work area to fit the exact duration of this layer. So watch, I'm gonna hit I and then B, which trims my work area, O, which goes to the end of this clip, and then N to trim that. And now I can do Control Shift X and I can trim that down to my layer. So that's a really, really fast way to work if you want to trim it down, trim everything down to one specific layer. If you do that in front of someone, they're going to think you're some kind of wizard. Now if I want to like trim or expand the in and out points of a layer, but I don't want to shift the actual layer in time, I can use the bracket keys with the Alt modifier. So let's say I want my sun to begin all the way over here. With the sun layer selected, I'm going to hold Alt and hit left bracket. And now that expands that all the way out to here. Let's say I want it to end at the marker. I'll go to the marker, hold Alt, right bracket, and now it's trimmed. That's a pretty big one that I use all the time. So let's say you have a lot of pre-comps here. I'm just going to grab this pre-comp. Pre-comp it again, I'm going to grab this pre-comp, pre-comp it again, I'm going to grab this pre-comp, pre-comp it again, grab these, pre-comp these. You know, this is getting pretty messy. I've got all these pre-comps, like I can dive down, pre-comp, pre-comp, layers. Now if you want to see what's going on with all this madness, you can view what's called a flow chart. So if I hit the tab key, you're going to see this little dialog box pop open here and you can see my master comp here duplicate with all the pre-comps. So I can click on these little arrows and that's going to keep dragging me back down in the flowchart of these pre-comps and it'll take me to the first pre-comp. Now if I want to open up any of these, I can just click on one and it's going to take me straight there. Now if I open up the mini flowchart again, I can quickly navigate back. Now if you'd like to see a bigger flowchart, you can right click in the comp panel and do composition flowchart. And you can edit the direction of the flow and you can change it from like vertical to horizontal, whichever way you like to look at it. If you're not a big fan of the scroll wheel on a mouse, or maybe you don't even have a mouse, you could use the period and comma keys to zoom in and out of your comp panel. And right now you can see I'm viewing like all 15 seconds of my comp. If I want to jump all the way down on a frame level, I just hit the semicolon key and it's going to take me all the way down to a very, very precise view. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If I left out any keyboard shortcuts that you think are just amazing and should be on this list, something that I should be using and you'd like to share it with me, please leave it down in the comment section. I always love to learn about new keyboard shortcuts. If you wanna check out more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, or go check out my Tuesday Tools playlist.